And we're back with Craig Salman Sawyer, former Navy SEAL, former Air Marshal, current badass. So, <laughs> gotta ask you, I didn't ask you before and I should have. Where'd the name Salman come from? Well, or is it that I'd like to have some really sexy kind of a, <laughs> a badass story, but really it's just a play on my last name, Sawyer. That's, that's, okay. It started in elementary school playing keep away with the football on the on the at recess, you know, my best friends, they, they saw a man hit me long, so we were just playing with the ball, and it, it stuck. Yeah. So, oh, so it's kind of... Ever since. Because people ask me, like, where's your name come from? And I, I, you're better than me. I just make up, like, this really cool, sexy story. As like, <laughs> You know, this, this one guy was walking down the street one time, he's like, you, from now on, are going to be called Cole. No, I'm joking. Um, but, <laughs> so, um, you mentioned earlier about uh, being involved in anti-poaching. So, so how involved was that considering we, we are talking about poaching? Because I think people tend to add a bit of a, a softness to the idea of poaching, so to speak, where they don't think it's that involved. Um, uh, well, in Africa, it's different than it is here in the States. You know, uh, here in the States, somebody might be poaching. They might be poaching an elk or something like that to put be, uh, meat on the table. And they do meat poaching in Africa as well, but a lot of it's international stuff. So they send in... Um, big players uh, to to kill big game animals, mostly anim- uh, elephants and rhinos for their horns mm-hmm. and tusks for sale on the black market in Asia, and it's it's big money, yeah. and they're funding terror with it too. So Boko Haram wow. is working their way down south through Africa and using this money from poaching for terror to fund terror operations, really? and other terror organizations doing the same now. Now, so, it, go ahead, sorry. No, it's just a lot of things. A lot of Americans here don't necessarily understand how much money is involved. One rhino horn, for instance, can be worth up to half a million dollars on the black market in Asia. So if a team of five or ten poachers comes in with AKs from Mozambique, cops fence, shoots three, you know, three animals, hacks off their horns and, and, and sends it back, that's that's a million five. You know, to Boko Haram or whoever's in, involved. So, why, I mean, that, that, why does that command such a hype? Why does something like a rhino's horn command? Such, I mean, forgive my ignorance, but why? no, it's perception. It's culture. It's mm-hmm. it's old Asian culture, and they they believe that it has medicinal purposes. That it works like Viagra. They believe mm-hmm. that it cures cancer. They even believe that it cures the the common cold. So. Uh, it's difficult to overcome because of the cultural depth of this. Gotcha. You, know, you, you know, there there are celebrities over there in China. Thank God now, saying, "Hey, don't do this." You know, this is just keratin. It's only like your skin and fingernails. So, yeah. if rhino horn cured cancer, so would biting your fingernails, but it doesn't. So stop yeah. it. You know, because we're running out of rhinos. <laughs> right. Fifty million year old species. They're saying and we're about to wipe them completely out. So. Um, but it's being perpetuated through modern doctors, which complicates mm. it. So a modern doctor will give a cancer patient, for instance, uh, a modern treatment of chemo and radiation, and then toward the end, give them a little rhino horn as well and say, oh, look, the rhino horn cured you. Uh, okay. Just a lot of money on the side for the rhino horn. So they, they grind it up as powder and uh-huh. say that it does whatever as long as – they're able to fool people. They can make a lot of money. So it's unfortunate because the animals lose. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Now, how aggressive are the, are, are the poachers? Is it, is it kind of a situation where they know, you know, you're in, you're, you're around and they stop doing what they're doing or is it, are they just. It, it really varies from time to time and from region to region. Okay. You know, sometimes there, there'll be countries that have a shoot on site policy and they quit having a poaching problem for a while <laughs> until they soft back up on that. You know? gotcha. uh, other places, uh, it's just a slap on the wrist. So mm-hmm. the the poachers will be pretty pretty aggressive. And and look, they're they're not full time poachers. A lot of them sometimes yeah. they're just thugs that are drug runners or human traffickers, and they're in on this too because it's just another way to make, make a buck. Uh, they'll come in high, drunk, uh, with AKs, you know, full auto, and just come in and shoot anything that gets in between them and the and the rhino. So. It's uh, we, it's weird, but it, it does vary. To answer your question, it, it's it's some of them are just out there meat poaching yeah. to survive or to make a buck for meat, and others are out there for the big money, money. and uh, they got no sense of humor about getting caught. So you're gonna have a shootout with those guys. Wow. All right, so on to some lighter things. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so, so tell us about this video you did with uh, Gunny from Full Metal Jacket. Oh, man. Uh, well, Gunny, uh, I'm doing a TV show called Gunny Time with uh-huh. him. And we just uh, um, did a, f- a couple more episodes for season three, and he is a hoot, man. I mean, he's <laughs> he that's Gunny. No, and he's a great guy, and, and uh, you know, I like to mimic him on, on set and see if I can get him <laughs> uh, We just have a good time. So we we play with a bunch of different weapons that people may not have gotten their hands on or gotten uh-huh. to shoot or that are famous for this reason or that, that are novelties, you know, and um, people have been enjoying it. I sure have enjoyed making it with Gunny. So yeah. uh, we're looking for more of that in the future, but it's, it's been a blast, man. We get out there and just tear it up and like, like a bunch of school kids and just <laughs> shoot can it up. I, and can have, I, can have I join? Fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I got to, to cover the stoner, which, you know, the yeah. Navy SEALs carried Vietnam. Those guys were my heroes. That's who I wanted to grow up to become. And man, I got to be uh, on the episode and handle that, that stoner with Gunny. That was fantastic, man. Yeah. So I, I value those experiences. So what was the, so was, would you consider, what was your most memorable gun that you've ever shot? Most memorable gun. <clears throat> Man, I still like the twenty two that my grandfather gave me. Really? He had it when he was a boy in southern Texas shooting down by the creek yeah. and shooting squirrels and cans. And and um, he gave it to me when I was a boy, and uh, I'll give it to my son. You know, I mean, it's just a little simple bolt-action rifle, but uh, I, I just like it. Yeah. I just like it. You know, awesome. it's so simple. It's so quiet and uh, no recoil. And, yeah. And uh, the sentimental value just makes it really cool. Absolutely, absolutely. So for, for people who don't know, what is Tactical Insider? Tactical Insider is my company that I use for film and television and training. Okay. So I do consulting for different actors if they want to know how to look like a professional. If they're running around fighting, shooting, yeah. I'll help them tune up uh, with that. A lot of them are coming to me now for personal protection training. How Hey, so how do I protect myself when I'm not with a full detail? Yeah. Or... If I am with my full detail, how do I not just be a baggage? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I always said if I had personal bodyguards, I'd still carry too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I enjoy tra- training them yeah. and one-on-one and sometimes small groups. So that's been very, very cool. And um, under Tactical Insider, I train groups all across the country with the hard target training course. I train others more of a kind of a commando type thing of – Pistol carbine, a little more tactical, running the gun type stuff. The mm-hmm. guys that really enjoy that and law enforcement units. And uh, so Tactical Insider is my company that I do all, all that. that. I, everything That's else lives under that. Training and consulting under. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, man, we're fortunately we're out of time, but um, I, I really appreciate the conversation. I mean, we talked about a lot of interesting things that I didn't even know about. Um, and so it was, it was truly a right pleasure. On, but no, thank you yeah, very I much, man. I appreciate you uh, having me on. It's good chatting with you. It was a good interview. So, man, thanks. Absolutely, thanks, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> All right, let's keep in touch. Let's go get on those horses. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm about the horse life now. I wasn't before. I'm about it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you around. Yes, sir. You take it easy, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us today on CN Live. Come back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm Coley on Noir, and I'm out.